thing is that I would like to um, thank you for spending this afternoon with me and um, on behalf of two elementary schools, uh, Miss Weston's third grade class in um, Woodcrest and in Gonzales' fifth grade, Mrs. Brown's class, you know, I'm sure they'll appreciate getting a chance to get to know you a little bit better. So why don't we start by go ahead and introduce yourself and your name and um, stuff like that. Hello. <laughs> My name is Lone Wolf Who Walks Among White Clouds. I am of the Pueblo people. We come from New Mexico. But the buckskin is I am wearing to honor my brother, who is a Cheyenne from Wyoming. He made the complete outfit for me, and I feel honored, so I wear it. That I have was given to me, uh -huh. and it was not given to me by one of my people. Oh, okay. Uh, if I may, I'd like to explain about names, which is something that uh, people always wonder, where do we get our names or, or how do you get a name? Basically what it is, is when you are born, your parents, in this society, your parents are the ones that give you a name. In our society, it is the grandparents who name you. Now the names are brought about by things that happen, visions that they have, or see, things that they see that other people do not see. Uh, in my case, when I was small enough and to be able to walk, I walked away from home three times. Hmm. And I was always to myself and always searching. And it was this time that it was remarked that I am like a wolf, always looking, always searching, very curious. And then notice I was always by myself when I did this. Mm -hmm. This for the name Lone Wolf. Mm -hmm. Now who walks among white clouds. I am from the white cloud clan. Okay. And naturally it was added on. Mm -hmm. That was done and I am known by that name among my people. Here in this society, because the name is too long, it's been cut down and I was given the name Ray <laughs> White Cloud, okay. which is the name that I am answered to now. And you're clearly the students in Miss Weston's third grade class had um, a series of questions that they, things that they did not know about the Indian people that they had questions about. Would you mind if we ask you some of these questions? No. Okay. If anything, I am here to help you in any capacity I can. Okay, great. The first question is from a student named Janet, and she wanted to know why the pe why people call Indians Indians. Well, this has been a uh, there's many different uh, variations of the story as to how that came about. And the most popular belief theory is the fact that when Columbus sailed into our land, into our waters, that you actually saw that he was looking for a, a place called India. Mm -hmm. And he looked at us and said, we must be the Indians. Mm -hmm. And therefore the name, I believe, stuck. It kind of stuck, huh? It kind of stuck. <laughs> Uh, another student named Guadalupe wants to know why are Indians brown? Uh, we believe, the Indian people believe, and this is part of our tradition that we are taught, that we are people of the earth. Mm -hmm. We are people that belong and, and live in harmony with, with the earth. Mm -hmm. And I ask you, what color is the earth and everything around you? Seems to be brown. <laughs> So, he made us all to live together uh -huh. in perfect harmony. Now you said such. Right. We are all related. Okay. That's good. Um, one of the questions that was asked by a student named Rodan was, how do the Indians kill their animals? Now in this instance we are talking about taking food uh -huh. for the benefit of our families. Now, I would like to underline families, because mm -hmm. as, as I've stated before, when we go out, take any animal, mm -hmm. this is strictly for survival purposes. Mm -hmm. And when any animal is taken, it is shared among all the people, and the entire animal is uh, blessed and given thanks to before we actually do anything to it. Mm -hmm. 
as far as how do we do it. In the olden days, we did it by means of bow and arrows. We did it by using a lance. We snared smaller animals. Mm -hmm. uh, we set uh, traps for the bigger animals that we could not physically overpower. Mm -hmm. These days, even, even today, I still uh, go on pilgrimage mm -hmm. and I still hunt. And today, obviously, we do it with rifles. Mm -hmm. And But even today, we always keep it a traditional camp. Mm -hmm. And we always give thanks before we go out. And if we are fortunate enough to gain something, mm -hmm. then it is shared among many of our people. And everything, every part of that animal is used. Now, there's some popular films out. Um, one that comes to mind is the remake of The Last of Mohicans. But there's a scene at the very beginning of the film where the Indians are, there were three warriors chasing after, I believe it's a buck, and in, in the process of the chase, they express a, how they honor the animal. The honor, the, there's, a, there's a necessity between them. They need the animal for food, but they honor the animal for his, the, the characteristics of the animal that they honor in their faith. Is that what you're saying here is? Yes, this is exactly what I'm saying. We have to remember that in our tradition, we believe that in olden days, the animals were our brothers and sisters. Uh -huh. They spoke to us, mm -hmm. and they were put here before we were, mm -hmm. and we learned from them. They taught us how to survive. Mm -hmm. They taught us how to live off the land. So we consider them as our elders, mm -hmm. and we honor them for their agility, for their survival skills, and also for them being able to think us worthy and giving up their lives that we may live. Could you explain a little bit of the, um, the garment that you're wearing? What I am wearing is a shirt made by my brother, mm -hmm. and this is tan elk skin. It's entirely made by hand. Every stitch was put on there by my brother. Uh -huh. I also like to point out that even Indians, children in school, when they're doing their homework or doing any classwork, they're always asked, put your name on there, write your name so we will know. Uh -huh. The Indians do the same thing. Uh -huh. There are certain ways that we identify things. Uh -huh. In my brother's case, you will note the two handprints. Mm -hmm. This is his mark. Mm. And wherever you see two handprints, you'll know my brother made that article, mm -hmm. and that way he identifies it. Mm. And uh, the feather that you have? This is an eagle wing fan, mm -hmm. and only certain people are allowed to possess these. Mm -hmm. First, I would say that the eagle feathers are governed by federal law mm -hmm. and is prohibited for anyone other than a, an indigenous people and even then you have to have uh, some kind of uh, way to identify these feathers. Mm -hmm. They were given to you, uh, you were honored and, and again they were given to you. Mm -hmm. But for a person to go out and possess these, it is a federal offense. Mm -hmm. uh, this is also states it's a badge of honor. It's a symbol of my position within the tribe. Which is? My father is a great spirit man throughout the Southwest. Mm -hmm. And even though at first I resisted to follow in his footsteps, it, some things are ordained and this is what I have to do. Mm -hmm. So I follow in his footsteps and I am honored and when people see this, they know that I am a man of position. Mm -hmm. And what, and in the in the meetings of your, whenever you get together with your other people, uh, what what function do you? You say that you're a medicine man, or no? What? My father is a spirit man. Okay, and and basically, uh, when we when we translate in this society, uh -huh. everybody says, okay, he's a medicine man. Right. We do not call him a medicine man, we call him a spirit man. Okay. The difference between a medicine man and a spirit man, a medicine man in this society is one known who cures 
people mm -hmm. physically. Mm -hmm. right? Physically, be it by using uh, different plants, herbs that we have, mm -hmm. or through different ceremonies that are performed. And we're talking about the physical body. My right. father is a spirit man. He did strictly, well, let me retract that, and I say strictly, but uh, basically he deals with people's uh, emotions mm -hmm. and thoughts mm -hmm. and the spirit world. Mm -hmm. Things that are in their heart. Things that are in their heart, correct. And so that is also what you do then as a spirit man. Yes, this is exactly what I do. People come to me when they have problems and we sit together and we uh, try to analyze and maybe I am able to see a way that they could not see. And this is my function, this is what I do. And the, the feather is a symbol of that status in the uh, community? This, the, uh, or position? The position that I, that I hold, yes. Of the um, popular things that we see on TV and in the movies, what things do you think that the, the people that know Indians only through the TV and movies, what things do you think that they have gotten wrong as far as Indians um, in the movies? Well, I'm constantly amazed that you said the children, right? but, but uh, I am constantly amazed that we have several, oh, I run across numerous grown-ups uh -huh. that are still under the belief that Indians, uh, based on what they see on TV, mm -hmm. actually live that way and did the things that were portrayed on the TV. I will say now that with the, uh, with the last few years, up to the last few years, mm -hmm. the Indians, have, I say three-quarters of the Indians you saw on TV were not Indians at all, <laughs> but were actors that were right. painted and made up to look like Indians. Mm -hmm. The dress, however, uh, a real Indian would look at them and be able to tell that they were wearing the wrong colors, they were doing the wrong dance, they were talking the wrong language, mm -hmm. and it wasn't a language, it was a makeup language, it was no language at all. Right. And the way the Indians were portrayed before, uh, this is one of the reasons that I go to schools now and speak to the children mm -hmm. to correct this. Mm -hmm. uh, dances with wolves. One of the movies was the last couple of years. Uh -huh. Now that was, I'm very familiar with it. Mm -hmm. I know several of the people that were there. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Costner went to the extremes mm -hmm. to keep it as realistic as, as it was supposed to be. And that is one of your better made movies today. One of the things that they have gotten right then since like Dances and Wolves with Wolves and the, the recent, more recent films. Well, I say basically the the one big thing that I would point out would be to show that Indians are like anybody else. We have families, we love our children, we love our brothers and sisters, and we keep pretty much to ourselves. Uh -huh. That we do not, despite of what you see on TV or in the older films, uh -huh. that we are not uh, very aggressive people by nature. Mm -hmm. That we do not believe in destroying things for the sake of destroying. Mm -hmm. This is not within our culture, this is not within our, within our upbringing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, like in, in any society, in any race, we cannot speak for all the people. Uh -huh. uh, obviously, there will be some that, uh, that, for whatever reason, will lean that way. But I am here to say that I would say 90% of the people that you will run across are all very humble people. Mm -hmm and people who are willing to do anything for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't we take a little bit of a break and uh, we'll come back in just a moment. I had questions about um, how Indians live, particularly about teepees, and one of the questions was um, why did the Indians or why do the Indians live in teepees? Okay, first I will explain the fact that uh, obviously that's one of the questions that I'm asked quite often. And uh, see, I we did not live in teepees. Uh -huh. Our houses were made out of adobe brick. Uh -huh. We lived in pueblos, and we are direct descendants of the Nazis, which are the ancient ones as they are known. Uh -huh. And they lived. Uh, in the, they were cliff dwellers. Uh -huh. uh, they were uh, one of the primary reasons they lived in those cliffs 
for the for the fact that it was easier to defend. Uh, ladders were needed to climb up into the village or climb down into it. And once those ladders were removed, there was no way animals uh, would be able to come in at night mm -hmm. and harm the children or livestock or things like of that nature. Mm -hmm. Now, as this is our our way of doing things. Everything is based upon the climate. Uh -huh. Everything is based upon the your surrounding, the environment around you. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lakotas, uh, Cheyenne, and several of you, uh, which is about all your Plains Indians, mm -hmm. lived in teepees. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason they lived in teepees was the fact that they were very nomadic people. They followed from season to season. Mm -hmm. They moved around a lot. Mm -hmm. And the old way to be able to move the entire village was to be able to make it almost uh, portable, everything portable. Uh -huh. The reason they moved a lot was because of the fact that they tried not to deplete all the game around them. Mm -hmm. But when game was getting scarce, they moved to a different region. The uh, highlight of the year was twice a year that they would go on a buffalo hunt. Uh -huh. The buffalo would migrate at certain times of the year, and therefore that was a time when they uh, went out and got buffalo for their skin, to make the clothing, mm -hmm. to, for the sightings on, on the teepees, for uh, uh, just about everything they needed mm -hmm. was, get, was gotten there. Uh, on the East Coast, the Senecas, the Seven Nation Indians, mm -hmm. lived in what they were they called the longhouses. Uh -huh. And these were made out of out of wood. They lived in a very uh, dense population of trees. Hmm. So there was plenty of wood there. And because the winters were so severe, their homes had to be built to withstand the ridges of, of the warmness of the summer and the, the almost blizzard-like uh, conditions in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. uh, the people in the West Coast, uh, those were the people that are known for their totem poles. Mm -hmm. Now, they... The Pacific Northwest, up right. towards Washington, mm -hmm. all the way up into uh, Canada, mm -hmm. uh, down to Oregon, as far down as Oregon. They lived primarily off the sea. Mm -hmm. And accordingly, their, their homes had to be built to withstand the ridges of the change in the climate also. Mm -hmm. So it depends on where you were at the climate, the environment around you pretty much dictated as to what kind of a home you were going to have. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that people traveled because of the game, scarcity of game, no water, then that decided uh, pretty much what uh, even your clothing that you had on you mm -hmm. was decided by that. So not all Indians wore buckskins or... No, no, no. Uh, matter of fact, the buckskin shirt that I wore mm -hmm. is six well, this time of the year, it's extremely warm uh -huh. and it's heavy. Uh -huh. But uh, when you get into weather, say around freezing or so, you'll be very, very glad to have one of those. Uh -huh. And the, primarily, what they did was wore those during the winter time. The summer time, that's why you saw Indians go around uh, with uh, bare chested or just having a, a breastplate on. Uh -huh. The leggings were also taken off, and that's where people say they walked around in the breech cloth uh -huh. because of the climate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we talked a little bit about the feather. Um, one of the one of the students named William had a question about why do Indians wear feathers on their heads and masks on their faces? Okay, primarily the way that we rate a person in this society is by pretty much by the car he drives, where he works, uh, where he stands on the cooperative ladder. Where he lives. Where he lives. Yeah. Everything is based on that. In our society, we don't believe in riches. Matter of fact, riches is uh, if a person was to hoard, mm -hmm. so he would have great wealth, mm -hmm. the other people would look down on him. Mm. Okay. It, was a, it was a very bad thing to do. Consequently, the only way a person had to be honored and be recognized but by a great deed that was done. Here again, I might point out, on TV, you see that the warriors go off to battle, and after he has slain 
so many of his enemies, he comes back and he is given the feather. Uh -huh. And consequently, the more feathers you have, the more battles you've been engaged in. Mm -hmm. Well, I like to inject something on here. Okay. The battles were fought, primarily the battles were fought to protect property and family, uh -huh. protect your uh, your boundaries, so to speak. Uh -huh. uh, and the, the eagle feathers were awarded for bravery. Matter of fact, if a person was to go and do what is known as counting coup, which means that you were to go up to your enemy mm -hmm. in the heat of battle and just touch him and say, I have taken your spirit, mm -hmm. he would automa automatically drop out as if saying, uh, one, two, three, you're out. It's like a tag. It's a, like a tag, mm -hmm. and then by where he would automatically be out. And he was honored more for letting that person live than he was for actually uh, bringing a sudden end to his life. So the feathers weren't, weren't, they weren't the number of people killed, it was, no. it was a sign of honor for acts of bravery. Acts of bravery and deeds done uh -huh. for the benefit of the people. So thank you for spending some time with us. Is there anything that you would like to conclude with? First of all, I'd like to thank the children for allowing me to come into their classrooms and share with them some of the things that have been known to me forever. And one of the things in parting I would say to you is just remember, our people from day one have been taught to honor and respect Mother Earth and all our surroundings. And if I had to, I would say I would apologize to you for not having done this sooner. Because as I look around, I see what we are doing to Mother Earth. I feel for you, my children.